Welcome to the Michelson Williams TSX podcast with your host Michelson Williams. On this episode of the TSX podcast, Michelson has a hard-hitting and insightful interview with Real Truths for Men, aka RT. RT lives with his wife and two children in Ontario, Canada. RT keeps it real as he talks with Michelson about men's issues with achievement, depression, the current social climate, and declining masculinity by way of lower testosterone. RT works with men to help them find their path through creating optimal life choices which perpetuate a healthy mindset. He is also an entrepreneur who has created educational materials around building success on social media like Twitter. This interview may be a bit difficult for some men to deal with, but is definitely something all men should pay attention to. Sometimes it's lessons we need that are the most difficult to hear. RT shows us how the real truth can never be misogynistic, which is the adverse of what society is teaching men currently. So I urge you to sit back relax and get ready for this powerful information from RT, as he brings the real truths for men. Before we get started don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to the podcast on Substack, Rumble, and Instagram. Follow Michelson on Twitter at MichelsonWIL11 and at ADMFitnessFX. Your support is greatly appreciated. Let's get to it. Hello. RT. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, sir? I'm doing okay. I've been waiting for you, and I just uh, I didn't know who was calling who, so. Yeah, I uh, I, I had to test uh, my recording system again um, to make sure that it was okay that I that I was able to call you. Um, but it, yeah, it, no problem at all. It it could have went either way. Well, we're here, so that's good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, how how are you this morning in Ontario? Pretty good. I'm pretty good this morning. Everything's uh, doing well. A little rainy outside, but other than that, are you born and raised there? Yes. Okay. Born and raised. Yes. Listen, this is going to be laid back. So speak freely about whatever. Hopefully you'll teach some lessons and I'll be able to learn something and put out some good information for the audience. Perfect. Sounds great. So we're going to start off with the the normal introduction. What would you like me to call you? Yeah, you can call me RT. That's a good one. Um, I just can't identify uh, right now as I'm employed and uh, my current workplace, um, how do you say this, politically correct. So some of the stuff that I say may be interpreted or twisted as misogynistic, which it's not. It's just it's going against the current political frame. So um, I'm just trying to protect, obviously, my main source of income. And then eventually, like I said, if, if this continues to grow and monetize, then, yeah, then I mean, I won't be so... Uh, cautious but uh, as of right now yeah rt i think would be perfect okay okay fantastic listen rt they're they're, they're gonna come after you anyway eventually i i'm sure you know this so <laughs> no, no. i you know it's only a matter of time i mean the the clamp down and is getting i mean whatever i it is what it is as long as i'm doing something along the way that's why i think it's important to kind of cross platform and grow now before it's, you know, a little bit too, uh, too late. Yeah. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I go by RT, a, uh, it's a pseudonym. Obviously I'm trying to, uh, maintain a little bit of an anonymity, um, due to my current, uh, employment. Right. Um, born, raised in Canada, Ontario, Canada, and um, I started a Twitter account, which obviously you found me on um, about three months ago, just trying to help men and develop themselves into the uh, into the people they need to be. Right. And what got you into this space? How I started into this, this genre of, I guess you can say masculinity, I guess uh, helping men, I know it's kind of like, uh, um, I guess, a, a negative term nowadays talking about masculinity because we've been, you know, hearing on the news and, and through through social media that masculinity and t- testosterone is toxic. Right. Um, I got into it because I've always been a 
political hobbyist, learning about how the world truly works. And um, so mix in some heartbreak and some relationship issues. And I realized real soon that everything I was being told wasn't exactly the truth. So um, I've kind of got past the anger phase, which happened about a decade ago, and understanding that maybe being the nice guy doesn't always work. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to set boundaries. And then people start to respect you when you start to say no. So I've transitioned that into being a bit of a, an expert in this and authoritative figure. I help coach men. I help coach individuals and, and um, young men especially and I just wanted to bring my my knowledge to the uh, to the Twitter space. Right, right. Did you? Um, uh, you said um, I believe when we when we spoke online that you said that Twitter was your main uh, your main social media. Yes, yeah, for right now it is my main social media. I'm just kind of getting in, involved. Uh, my social media account is is growing quite rapidly. Uh, as of today, I'm around 7,000 in the last, I don't even think it's been three months. So hope to hit that 10,000 mark soon enough. Um, but eventually I'd like to cross platform into uh, a website, um, Instagram and other social media platforms, just in case one knocks you off, you're not completely isolated there. Right, right, right. Tell me a little bit about your, uh, like your educational background. Well, I have a few um, colleges under my belt. I, I got into the rat race fairly early on in my early 20s, making decent money in emergency services, and I really enjoyed it. However, uh, my true calling was always running and starting my own business, being the, uh, being my own boss and directing my own kind of future. So I, I, I've dabbled in a few different uh, professions, including physical fitness, um, emergency services, and that sort of thing. Um, what I've come to realize now, though, is my passion is helping helping people. Right. My passion is trying to uh, to uh, help people over achieve, uh, achieve you know their their goals and overcome personal obstacles. So I've gotten into not just personal training you know, developing the physique, but almost like uh, life mentoring and coaching, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You, you said you, you're you also in emergency services? Or you yes, were... I was in emergency services uh, since we uh, retired from there. Um, not due to my age, but due to just some of the things that you see on a daily basis. Um, and currently I own my own business and as well as I'm employed by, like I said, an organization that, um, that may not see the, uh, the same things that I see and agree with the same things that I speak about. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, of, of course you have to, uh, you have to protect your, you know, pr protect your family at, at all costs, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I definitely understand that. <laughs> Um, well, it's funny because um, you know you can get away. You used to be able to get away with a lot of a uh, lot of um, ideas. You you really truly had a sense of of uh, to a degree um, freedom of speech. But nowadays uh, the restraints are tight, and in fact, um, it's very easy to cross the line. So I just want to ensure that, like you said, my employer doesn't hear about this. So right. So. Um, have, have you have have you witnessed the repercussions of of anyone else, either close to you or distant from you, or even in the news, that uh, that that's suffering from 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 being outspoken? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a big Andrew Tate fan per se. I mean, I agree with some of the stuff he's saying. Um, I think what he's trying to achieve is is fantastic and, and helping them. And I know he's getting slandered in the media, but that's one example. I've seen endless clips of Andrew Tate speaking of uh, you know how to how to uh, bring bring motivation and, and self respect to uh, the young men, um, especially in the society that is being 
you know, indoctrinated that men are inherently bad just because they're men. So yes, I think Andrew Tate's doing a good thing. He's one individual who's who's suffering repercussions. Um, but yeah, I personally, I have seen a lot of people I've worked with, um, and it may not be gender related. It could just be something that they don't agree with what's happening in society or what's happening in the current political environment that um, they get a slap on their wrist, depending on how severe or what they said. And unfortunately, I think that's just the climate and the culture we're living in right now. Um, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how you reverse this. I think the only way is to uh, continue to stand up and fight back against the forces that are trying to push this um, this truly toxic narrative forward that, you know, um, and, and in my situation and in my niche, that men are inherently bad. Now, I have uh, two sons, and I've been told, um, and they're very young, I've been told that they have you know, such things as rape genes inside them, that it's only a matter of time before they're activated and that they are inherently bad. So this, this, this indoctrination goes deep. It goes very, very deep. So my, my job is to right now protect them and ensure other men don't go through some of the things that I did. So that's, that's kind of my goal right now. And that's, that's where I get my motivation from. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let's go back to uh, to Andrew Tate. I, I know that everybody's talking about him right now, and uh, they're talking about the Tate brothers. Give me uh, give me something that you disagree uh, with the Tates on, and then we'll move right into um, a, a few things that you do agree with. I don't know if there's anything that I disagree with. I've I've spent you know, many uh, nights scrolling social media and seeing some of these these clips of him. I haven't seen anything in particular that that I totally disagree with. I know he's trying to, you know, send out a message. I think one of the messages that he may not be realizing that he's sending is is he's talking about finding inner strength and understanding that you can overcome obstacles and how to navigate women and so forth. I think right. I think one of the things that he may not understand what he's communicating is this uh, materialistic pride or sense that he has, that he has all these very fast, famous, well-known sports cars and these a lot of good-looking women around him. I think he's uh, unconsciously sending this message that this is what's going to bring happiness, and that's not what's going to bring happiness. Obviously, it's a it's a uh, an accomplishment to have these nice things, but. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of off the top of my head there. I think a lot of the stuff Mr. Tate speaks to and speaks about is, is very, um, enlightening and, and, and very positive. You don't, if you don't get tainted by the, uh, social media, uh, and, uh, mainstream media narrative. Right. Well, yeah. we, we, we know that he has a, he has a persona and, and, and there's that, that persona he pushes out of of uh um charisma and that's normal for anyone who's who, who who's uh garnering the ear of a large crowd i mean they're going to have that persona so. right very much so um, he's, a, he's a good self-marketer he's a good speaker he rarely stutters he knows exactly what he's going to say he's true to his uh his message i mean his message gets repeated over and over and it's you can tell that he's not uh, being um, fake. He's very genuine. So that is something that I, I do respect about him. And I do think, like I said, he's, he's, he is bringing a positive message. So how long, how long do you think he's going to last? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The, the, the social media powers, I mean, I think a lot of it is hype. Um, I think we're being misguided a lot of times too. There's a lot of um, deception and, and stuff in the world, and people have to keep their eyes open. Mr. Tate, um, like I said, I believe he's a genuine person, but uh, eventually, uh, when you get to be too powerful and too strong, and, and your your message gets out there, I mean, I think certain people tell you to tone it down, and you have to. So, how long do I think he has? I'm not sure. I mean, I, hopefully, he continues on for a little bit longer. I think longer. I think he's. He's helping some some young men, especially the men that are uh, struggling alone and 
and uh, there is a lot of depression and thoughts of suicide in 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 um, in men. And I think ever since COVID and lockdowns and all that stuff, um, there are a lot of men struggling uh, silently. And so I think he gives them a little bit of a, a ray of hope. And and so I think uh, hopefully he goes on as long as he can. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you. Um... There is a, uh, a great deal of, from my research, uh, a great deal of uh, um, mental anguish and depression by men. Um, I believe this is, this is by design, because if you can crush men's spirit and their, uh, men have, men have a, an inherent need to be needed. And Absolutely society is pushing that men are worthless and there's no need for mainly women to need men. And the problem with this is, is, um, women are very, um, influenced and easy to influence and direct because they've always been directed by, by men since the beginning. So to sigh up women in, 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 into jumping on a bandwagon where they hate men, that's easy, you know? It's, it's very demoralizing what's happening to men. Um, men, like you said, have an inherent need to provide, protect, look after, love. Um, and they're, like you said, they're being told that they're not welcome, they're not wanted, they're not needed. And, I mean... We all know that, that men crave femininity, men crave women, and, and women instinctively, uh, they crave that masculine presence. They crave uh, protectionism, and they, they look for provisioning in men. When you're telling a man that he's no longer needed, and this message is repeated over on you know, all different types of media over and over, um, there's going to be... Um, a society or a group of men that just that that give up. Um, you're getting, you're not going to have the 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 strong men that that create this society and that look after the society properly. You're going to experience a true toxic masculinity, uh, and, and I mean it in the the non traditional sense. When I talk about masculinity and traditional masculinity, uh, someone who's strong, someone who's courageous, someone who's brave, someone who looks after their family, protects children, protects men. These are all great inherent values and great traits of a, of a man. What's happening right now are men are being encouraged to look at pornography. Uh, you know, it's good for your prostate, they tell you. Masturbate this many times a week and you'll have a healthy prostate. Well, we all know that uh, through history lessons, you know, that semen retention, I know it's kind of a buzzword, and that sexual energy transmutation Semen retention and, and staying away from pornography is the best thing. And it's actually one of the first things I tell men. Stay away from pornography. It's not going to do you any, any good. It's going to actually slowly eat away at your soul. You're going to feel shameful. You're going to be regretful. And you're going to have a lack of motivation, lack of enthusiasm for life. The problem with that, and I digress, um, is the fact that um, this inherent, you know, toxic masculinity uh, trait that, you know, society says every individual, every boy has. It's, it's absolutely detrimental to what's happening in the world. I think you, you're seeing this, and I don't know if, if you feel it, but I definitely feel in my gut, you know, that, that the Western world is in decay. And I don't know how to bring this back except just sharing the truth that men aren't bad and that we need to look after women and, and hopefully... You know, the message gets spread around. The pendulum has, has swung a little bit too far this time, I believe. Yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And um, I, I actually can go off of more than a gut feeling because for the past uh, almost 20 years, I've actually been mapping and tracking this, uh, this decay. Um, and uh, in 2007, I went back to to uh, went back to school um, to try to dig into the psychology of it, and I actually dropped out because I couldn't even take the uh, the uh, 
and I'm, I'm using air quotes, the education system that was uh, brainwashing, you know, tr trying to dig in and, and brainwash me in, in, into a certain way of thinking just from being in, in, in college again. Yeah, and I agree with you. It, RT, it is absolutely crazy the amount of uh, uh, mental warfare that's going on. And to go back to your to, to go back to the uh, pornography thing is pornography is also mental warfare because it digs into it digs into a very negative part of the psyche. Now, w when you first mentioned it, you uh, spoke as if you actually saw some data about masturbation. Can you dig into that a little bit? Um, well, off the top of my head, I do know that, that, I mean, from a, from a biological perspective, there, there are consequences when dealing with porn and ejaculating and masturbating. And, the, and I mean, here's the thing, everyone enjoys an attractive person. The problem is, is we're, we're absolutely destroying our dopamine receptors by consuming this porn. And, and often it's not just consumed on a, an irregular basis where, you know, I haven't looked at a, I haven't looked at, looked at porn in the last three weeks. I'm going to, you know, look at it today. That's not the case. Typically, men become obsessed with this, and it becomes quite a daily habit. One of the uh, quotes or research um, findings that I, I did was able to locate that just regularly masturbating, so this is one to two times a day, reduces your testosterone levels by 59%. Now, this is right from a PubMed article or, I guess, research article in 2003 and in that same article, it says that if you withhold from ejaculating, and that includes masturbating at all, just everything, for seven days, you'll have a 145% increase in, in testosterone. So there are biological uh, factors that come into play when you, when you masturbate. So I always tell people, you know, if you screw up or if you do it here and there, I'm not going to judge somebody for that, but if you're a chronic and you're constantly doing this. Well, you're there. There are consequences you're going to pay. Right, right. There, there's an Eastern philosophy um, that a man should not should not masturbate or should masturbate around every 21 to 23 days. Have you ever heard I have of that? Heard I have heard similar things. Now, I, I'm not an expert in it, and I don't know exactly what is the optimal time. I do know that some of the um, some of the Eastern literature that I've read um, suggests that um, the only time you should is when you um, have sex with uh, a woman or whatever. Um, when you naturally have sex, that your brain's able to decipher when you're doing it yourself. Um, that there is. A, an actual testosterone increase when you, you have intercourse versus masturbate. Now, I don't know the, the time frames. I've heard various time frames. I've heard, you know, some individuals reaching higher levels of consciousness and magnetism and everything else, which I do believe with in, in a sense. Um, but you have to remember, um, I think there's a lot of information out there. I think there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of disinformation. So, at the end of the day, I don't think you're going to have a problem if you if you jerk off once every three weeks, as long as it sticks to that. I think the problem is is these chronic masturbators that are doing it on a daily basis, sometimes two, three times a day. It's interesting because the the research that I've you know read and come across, is, I'm almost able to identify these individuals now. I've 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 spoken to so many men. I ask them. And, uh, and I, like I said, I've coached men as well. And you can see they, they look dead in the eyes. Their skin complexion is off. They often have um, some sort of hairline or hair density issue that I'm able to pick up right away. It's very interesting. I think there are very strong consequences from, from regularly masturbating. And I, I advise against it to, to everyone I speak to. Right. You know, you grow stronger without it. I mean, you, most men have an inherent and strong desire to be a strong man, a man that's dominant, a man that leads, a man that's respected. Well, you're not going to get that looking at pornography. Right, right. I agree. I, I, I agree. And um, 
And I, I, I would add that, or if you were a part of a cabal or something and you wanted to you, you wanted to take down men from every single point that you could, why not sneak in something extremely, so there's the obvious uh, detrimental factor to watching porn, but why, sure. not, why not sneak in something else like homosexuality in, 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 the, uh, in the peripheral so that you don't know that you're homosexual or, 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 or you don't know that the homosexual programming is being pushed on you because all you think you see is, is, is the, uh, the, 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 the information in, your, in the main vision and you don't see the peripheral vision. Oh, and I mean, anyone that's opened their eyes to, and I don't like this term, the matrix. I mean, it's a little cliche. I think Andrew Tate's kind of champion that, but it is true. The world truly works uh, a little bit differently than people have often been led to believe. And um, social programming and predictive programming, all these things do occur. I mean, it's, it's out there. I mean, for you to, for, or for anyone to ignore it is just being naive. So how deep the rabbit hole goes, I mean, who knows? But absolutely. Are, are these things being uh, done purposefully? I believe so. Uh, is, it, is this being manufactured? I believe so. Um, there's just no other way around it at this time. I mean, if, if you wanted to, it, say you had a, a goal of destroying society, destroying men, this is one of the first steps you would introduce. Right, right, so, right. I don't think people are are naive. I just, I mean, it, it, again, this isn't this isn't uh, about my personal feelings. I usually back everything that I say with with some sort of research because I, I've I've been in this the the uh, the brainwashing game for a long time. And here's the thing: is there are a lot of people that that. Um, so I, I always stop people from saying like, well, people are stupid and people are are, 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 are are naive or whatever. It's not that the brainwashing and social conditioning is so strong and it's relentless that sure. people don't realize. So the matrix itself is real. There is a veil of information that has been, and this is generational. The only thing is the internet has made it uh, super accessible. That, for now, for now. Say that again. Oh, I, I, I say they, they made it accessible. And so the, the veil, like you said, has been lifted. But for now, I believe that there are plans to suppress all this information and it will be illegal to speak about it. Oh, you, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I mean, we're, we're, we're at the point where it's, it's already, information is already being suppressed. And the thing about it is because it was a slow walk, because it, it was generational, I'm sure you've heard of the, uh, the, the, the frog in, 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 in the pot, right? Absolutely. And, and another uh, example would be a death by, death by a thousand cuts. It's happening. It's happening right now. I'm just people have to open up their eyes to see it. And I believe once you do open up your eyes, it's, it's impossible to go back. It's impossible to go back because you see everything for what it truly is. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, I, 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 I agree with you 100% that once your eyes are open, they cannot be closed and you have to live with that. So let me ask you, how do you keep hope in yourself, in your, your personal self, your mind, your inner self? How do you keep hope when your veil has been lifted? We'll be right back. Thank you for listening to the Michelson Williams TSX podcast where Michelson talks about everything true success. I hope you're enjoying the show. Host Michelson Williams looks forward to bringing you more fantastic interviews with people who are shaping the future. This episode is sponsored by ADM Fitness Effect. 
the app that allows users to monetize their increased fitness output and then pays them in ADME crypto tokens for completed tasks. Also by Flow State Design Clothing and Accessories for the Eruditely Man and Map Magazine, the magazine for the true success seeker like you. Be sure to follow Real Truths for Men on Twitter, where you will find his ebook Maximize Your Twitter Growth. RT unlocks the Twitter algorithm and gives you practical tasks that will assure that you will grow a real following on Twitter. Don't forget to support the podcast if you like the content and link up with Michelson on all social media. Thanks for joining us on the Michelson Williams True Success Expert Podcast. Let's continue. How do you keep hope? Um, well, like I said, as a man, um, I believe my family relies on me. Um, I have to ensure the, uh, the, uh, that I protect them and I have to ensure that, uh, that I'm going to do everything I can to ensure their safety and survival. Now, it's funny to say that I think if you lose hope, if you truly lose hope, um, there's nothing really left. In this world, you you won't be able to get out of bed every day. You won't be able to do anything. You won't find joy in anything. Um, whatever is happening, I will always I'll be happy until the day it happens. And that's kind of like the way you have to look at it. I will continue to fight. I will continue to open up people's eyes. I will continue to champion um, men and women. And like I said, when I was speaking earlier about my employer possibly finding out about one of my accounts and and would be possible punishment. Nothing I say is misogynistic. I'm not, I love women. I love what they do. I love what they provide. The problem is, is it goes both ways. There's a polarity. Like I said, the masculine feminine polarity, and it's required for a good society to operate um, and to operate properly. Uh, What's happening now is, 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 is detrimental to society. I have to remain hopeful that, that something will, will, I mean, flip the pendulum. I'm also a man of faith. I believe in Jesus. I know that word is is um, being denounced lately, but I mean, with everything that's happening right now, you cannot say that there's not some sort of evil entity uh, pushing this. I know people have their own thoughts on that, but I don't believe in the Big Bang. I believe that we are created. I believe that we are looked after and loved by by God, and that is my hope. That uh, one day, if anything goes to to shit, I guess you can say that there'll be a plan on the other side. So, I guess that's the hope. Looking after uh, my my family and and uh, Jesus. So that's what keeps me going. And and at the end of the day, too, um, I feel like I make changes and in, in positive changes in men's lives on a daily basis. So it's just about spreading the word, putting up, um, you know. Uh, a resistance to this evil uh, narrative coming down the line. Yeah, I mean, uh, it 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 sure looks like evil from where I from where I sit. <laughs> well, you know what's funny because I know you're in, uh, I believe, in North Carolina. Um, the United States has always been the the conservative pillar of the world. Right. Um, I believe, and I mean, I believe a lot of countries are gone. They they've fallen. Um, they're in hands of individuals that really are looking out for their own personal interests and not the interests of the, the people they oversee. I think the United States, I'll put it to you this way. I remember after 9-11, there was a uh, football game. And at the football game, they showed a, they did a pan shot of the crowd. And the crowd was just crazy, crazy patriotism flags and i mean jets flying over it was just insane i remember thinking you know back in the day americans also had a, a, a an ego to them well globally people were, would know americans as i guess egotistical you know america first rah 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 america well i would do anything to go back to those days because now i see the conservative pillar that america once stood for being chipped away at and i don't know if it's you know, in my lifetime, but I truly believe in the next 10 years, you're going to see something um, in the United States in the sense of uh, not being able to recognize America for what it was. I still, there's still hope alive, but I believe the decay is just so prominent and so fast and it's being infiltrated and, and or, uh, uh, organized by uh, members within the uh, the government. It's just, right. 
it's horrible right now. I don't. It's not a conspiracy. I mean, a lot of people I speak to, once you start going down this line, if they don't see it on a black box in the corner of the room and the TV doesn't spoon feed that information to them, they don't believe it. Well, you can you can see the corruption, the the rot. It's happening. I mean, it's absolutely happening. You just have to open up your eyes and use the brain that you were given to think. A lot of people will just scan headlines, and uh, that's the that's the extent and depth of their knowledge. And they feel informed and they love to give their opinion. But you challenge on on anything, and they get mad and they instantly turn disrespectful. We live in a very strange, strange, strange world, and I'm just trying to navigate it myself and, and you know, share the wisdom, as I, it sounds like you are as well. Uh, uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. One thing that, that we have to do is we have to make sure that we always dig into our own uh, programming because um, every, every one of us is, is and are brainwashed from... Even even the patriotism that you saw after 9-11, that's all based on a program. That's oh, for sure. I I agree with you. The, and, and, you know, it's funny you bring that up because it is. I mean, the entire war itself was wrong, was based on a lie. It's all programming. Yeah. Um, you know, I agree with you there, Michelson, 100%. We're all brainwashed. We're, we're, we're all brainwashed. And all we're doing, uh, you, me, uh, the, the fellow brothers that, that, are, that, that are, you know, rising up and, and coming out of this, all we're doing is we're comparing our lifelong brainwashing to the, the, the deep down innate feeling that something is wrong and then it's showing us what's wrong slowly. I always tell people who even say, well, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right? Well, I mm -hmm. am. I am a conspiracy theorist. And actually everyone, everyone is a conspiracy theorist about something at some point in their life. This is 100%. And the reason we... We, we take a negative view about conspiracy theories is because of the Kennedy assassination when the CIA came in and they um, they deemed it through, through headlines. They deemed that everything if they deemed that if you looked into the Kennedy Kennedy assassination, you were a conspiracy theorist kook. And that's what they put out in, in, in the media even back then. So it shied everyone off of, of, of using the term conspiracy theorist in a positive light because they didn't want anyone to discover what they did. And even now today, they just released uh, last year, they released more of the uh, classified documents, but they won't release all of it. We know that the CIA was involved but they will not release all of it. And they do something called blacklining. Um, I, I used to read a, a lot of declassified information. The United States, the declassified information in the United States is held for almost a generation. And the reason they do that is so that it, it isn't for national security. That's, that's BS. It's so that the generation that was most affected is too old to do anything about um, what uh, the uh, uh, the uh, negative things that the government does? Uh, my understanding is that it's fifty years, so they allow the time to pass. And like you said, people people no longer care. They've moved on. They've moved on with their lives. And when you do bring this up and you bring up the fact, such as the CIA had a hand in the Kennedy assassination, they say, I don't know, man. It's what are you going to do about it? And they don't care. They move on to their lives, and within three minutes, they're scrolling social media again. They don't care. Holy mackerel. When you when you said, eh, what are you going to do about it? There are so many people. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. So many people respond to uh, the search for the truth in that exact same manner. Oh, what are you going to do about it? It's almost. I deal with it on a weekly basis. Uh, any type of, um, like I said, programming that that an individual has been um, 
subjected to. If I try to offer an alternative viewpoint or angle, and even if I try to convince them, they, they, they just almost shut down. What do you, I don't know, what are you going to do about that? Or they're, they're, they're indifferent. They don't really care either way. They just, they just want to continue on their life. And it's, uh, it's sad, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it's definitely sad. I mean, it's, it's, it's a sad state of, of mind. So it's the preoccupation of mind on frivolous things. Like there's no depth in people anymore. Do you get that? Oh, oh yeah, very much so. The, the, we, the superficialness just radiates. It just radiates. So, I mean, if they have, if people, like I said, that breads and circuses, uh, if people, if, if you give people bread and circuses, if you, if you, uh, uh, you know, distract them constantly and daily, you're, you're, who's going to, you, you've got a nation of docile and complacent people, especially docile and complacent men. It's unfortunate that we're in this position, but um, I think what right now, the only, the only way is to, is to try to open up people's eyes that, uh, the world isn't exactly the way they think it is. And, and it's very, it's very tricky. Oftentimes I just leave breadcrumbs and you, you, I've, I've did this before about a decade ago. I try to convince people to direct communication. You got to look at this, listen to this. I'd send them this. I'd send them that. It could be a two minute clip. It could be a two minute clip. They will not open it. They don't want to open it. And if they do by, by random chance, they open it. Their confirmation bias and their, their, they will not, they will not agree with it. They will shut it down. They will, they will argue it with some mute point. So, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And I, I lead, I lead them to the water and I, and if they want to drink it, they can drink it. Well, they, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're definitely on point and I can tell, <laughs> I can tell that you deal with a lot of people. <laughs> who who uh who are absolutely stuck in their in their brainwashing uh there's gonna be a segment that um that don't make it i mean they just to to me the 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 movie or or, or the, uh, the the series of movies about the matrix are a handbook um to what what uh what's going to happen it explains um what's happening today and is as relevant as i don't know if you've ever watched the movie red dawn i believe that was the 80s or early 90s is um, that the uh the infiltration by the russian army uh yes 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 well um i don't know where i heard this but um there was a there was a link to some sort of video um, years ago, it was George Soros uh, speaking of um, an infiltration in the United States when the U.S. military would not be able to look after itself, that they would send in human peacekeepers. And um, it's funny you say that because there were another clip. I mean, this is this is going back years. There were three Central Intelligence uh, Agency officers that basically on their deathbed said that there are plans that. Um, you know, there are multinational national interests that don't want the United States to, to remain the superpower. Uh, they want to centralize, you know, government. And how do you decay? How do you, how do you destroy a nation? Well, you destroy it from the inside. You, you know, That's you, feminize, you feminize men. You, you bring in endless, um, you can call them illegals or refugees, whatever you want to call them. You, you print money. So inflation and, and stuff goes through the roof. Eventually, they talk about the decay of the United States and the inability of, of the United States Army and military to protect itself. And these three central agency officers uh, basically stated on their deathbed that um, this is a plan. They, they, they've been working on this for years. It's not a, it's not a, um, a lie. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's, it's just something that's been looked at you know, 50, 60, 70 years down the line, and they predicted it would happen in the third decade of 2000. So right. um, we're, we're coming up to that. So I don't know what it's going to look like. I mean, I mean, you 
you can see, I guess you can see some of the writing on the wall, but at the end of the day, you're speaking about this type of information. People will label you a kook and you're crazy. It's like, well, I never said it. I'm just relaying the messages. I, I saw what Soros said. I saw what these three individuals said. I even, there was some, some um, links to the literature and the, the documents that were, that we're discussing this. It's just, it's just not on the television. So people don't want to believe it. They can easily discredit you by calling you a conspiracy theorist. And then that's that. So if they don't want to believe it, that's fine. Are these events going to take place? Well, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, but I mean, if, if you were to look at trends and, and stuff like that, well, I would say we're heading in that direction. We're not heading away from it. We're not solidifying the United States. We're not building up. It's, uh, um, it's, it's morals and its core values. We're, we're destroying them and everyone's running wild recklessly. And that's a, that's a society in decay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, America, uh, you know, the, the United States, we are the last stronghold of the world. In and the world. We, absolutely. And, and, and the only reason we are that is because our public has more guns and more weaponry than any other country on the planet. Um, however, so does our military, you know, like if, if they wanted to turn. Um, so there's something odd going on that, that I think about often. And, and that is, if you want to destroy everything, why not just destroy everything? Right? Why not just... Uh, uh, I mean, nuclear. I think there's, I think there's precision. Um, they don't want to just, you know, when, when I speak of they, the end of the powers that be that, that want to actually destroy the United States, they're not, they don't want to drop a, some sort of atomic weapon or something like that. I, I mean, like you said, what better way to do it than just have these, have, have the, the, the public in a pot of boiling water. They just don't realize that it's even, the temperature is increasing. Right. Why not just do it that way and then just let everything go smoothly? I'm not saying that an event or something may not be a catalyst that pushes this forward, but instead of going in like with like the bull in the China shop kind of analogy, let's just play chess and, and win the with precision and you're gonna accomplish your goals. It may take a little bit longer, but Well, you you you, you said it. It's um they, they they don't want to knock the chessboard over. They they're playing a game, and the game is fun. Because I, I I always tell people don't think like yourself. You have to try to come out of your own shoes, and you have to try to think like an elite. If you have all the money that you ever could want, ever. What would you spend your time doing? Gaining power. Exactly. You would play yeah. the game. If if other people are up uh, up there playing the game, and they're moving they're moving armies around, or they're starting wars, and then after the war is over, after they stop playing that war, they leave billions, billions of dollars in weapons right where they sit. That's a game. Well, and that goes back to the um, the feeling of power. Um, and, I, and again, I don't know who said this, but uh, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right. Um, power is a drug, and it's one of the strongest drugs. It works in the same way that, that heroin would work. Um, once you have it, you never want to let it go. So um, – our individuals, yeah, we have everything in the world. You have everything at your fingertips. You have all the money. You have all the cars. You have everything. I mean, there are people that, I, that uh, you know, they enjoy their life. They relax. They, and they, they, they truly are trying to make a difference, you know, positive difference in the world. But the, the, uh, the wealth, the wealthy class, I'm not talking about the, or sorry, the, the wealthy class, the ruling class. They, this drug, this is so intense and this is such a necessity for them that they will do anything to centralize it and, and control every aspect of power that they can. And, I mean, you can sit there and say that it's not happening. Well, it is happening. There are, there are elites in the social uh, power system of the world 
the, the same names, the same families, you know, it's, they own the banking systems. They own, they own everything. So yeah, what, do, what, how do you, you centralize it, you gain more power. And uh, that's where we are right now. I think there's uh, without, without, I should say, letting the working class know what you're doing. Right. That's for, that's for sure. We'll be right back. Thank you for listening to the Michelson Williams TSX podcast, where Michelson talks about everything true success. I hope you're enjoying the show. Host Michelson Williams looks forward to bringing you more fantastic interviews with people who are shaping the future. This episode is sponsored by ADM Fitness Effect, the app that allows users to monetize their increased fitness output and then pays them in ADM e-crypto tokens for completed tasks. Also by Flow State Design Clothing and Accessories for the Eruditely Man and Map Magazine, the magazine for the true success seeker like you. Be sure to follow Real Truths for Men on Twitter, where you will find his ebook Maximize Your Twitter Growth. RT unlocks the Twitter algorithm and gives you practical tasks that will assure that you will grow a real following on Twitter. Don't forget to support the podcast if you like the content and link up with Michelson on all social media. Thanks for joining us on the Michelson Williams True Success Expert Podcast. Let's continue. Well, here's the funny thing, RT, is they are letting the working class they are letting the working class know what they're doing at this point. I mean, look at Davos. They're at Davos, and they're basically saying, um, "We're we're going to kick the living crap out of you," and still we sit. Well, I agree with you there. Like, okay, so I'm aware of Davos. You're aware of Davos and the WEF. How many people would you say if you met 100 people on the street? I would I would say the vast majority would not know what the WEF is, what they're doing, that there's an even a, there's a summit occurring right now. So are they keeping people in the dark? Absolutely, in the sense of it's not, you know, blared over the, the TV in the corner of your room. And it, if it is, if there is any type of heat on them, they'll just get the, the narrative to spin it. You know, they'll, they'll have some pun or some expert come on and say, oh, these are just world-class individuals trying to, you know, sit down and have a conversation to, to, for the betterment of the, of the, the world. Well, right. that's what they're going to spin it as. However, I mean, actions speak louder than words. And there are things that these individuals are saying. There are things that individual, uh, the, the, these individuals are doing, such as um, – Talking about you can't eat red meat, you can't, you know, livestock and everything else has to be, you know, they're, they have improper genetics. We need to look after their genetics. Oh, by the way, they're they're destroying the climate, so let's just get rid of them. Go back to a plant based diet. Well, we were never designed to eat like that. Right. And uh, and, and cars. Well, we want to have kill switches in every single vehicle. We we don't want uh, you know fossil fuels being burned. We don't want this, that, and the other. They're destroying your way of life and under the guise of one thing. Well, uh, for the betterment of the planet, well, we need to look after this climate emergency. Well, I don't necessarily believe that, but you you sit there and you, you say that now. Well, you're a conspiracy theorist. It's, it's been proven. It's, it hasn't been proven. There are, there are interests at play that push this. And the Davos Summit with the WF, they're, they're telling you by, uh, you know, 2030, they're not going to own anything. And not only are you not going to own anything, you're going to be happy. Well, that to me sounds like, you know, totalitarianism. So it's um, it's a strange world we live in. Like I was saying, uh, I don't have all the answers. I do have my my finger on the pulse with a lot of this stuff. And I think any, and I use this term lightly, any man that wants to, you know, provide and protect for their family, I, I feel it's their duty to be aware of geopolitical events, just kind of see what's going on in the world. Uh, unfortunately, um, it comes with the territory. Uh, a lot of men don't want to uh, stand up and, and do that. They just want to kind of coast in their comfortable lives. I mean, they've, some of them have managed to build, you know, nice nest eggs and, and stuff like that. I tell them, though, you know, don't be surprised one day if the world that you're living in isn't the same for your children. So if that's not motivation enough, I don't know what is. Yeah, we're uh, we 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 are we are fat men sitting on the couch, and uh, 
we, men have to get up off the couch and they have to get involved because we've we've been programmed and this has been going on for years we've been programmed to take a step back and put women in charge and allow women to be in charge and the world cannot function with women in charge it can only be manipulated and moved because men bring the force we the masculine man brings the force that is needed to keep these uh these elites under control and uh and 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 men have to get up we we have to get up off the couch and we got to get get moving or else this whole damn thing is going to be lost well you you did hit the nail on the head they've inverted the natural of order of things and what i mean the natural order of things is how it's always been how it's always been the man always leads well right. now we're not we're not leading we're being led and we're told to you know let the women have a chance well i'm not saying that women can't lead i'm saying you don't need to discredit an entire sex or an entire gender um for the sake of another one's benefit that's 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 not achieving anything so i mean the the groups that are really pushing it are these 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 modern day feminists right if you if you speak to <clears throat> women who who want to be led by men and there are still lots of them they they acknowledge the fact that they don't want to make the decisions they don't want to go fight wars they don't want to build bridges and work in coal mines men keep the world going and the fact that we can sit there and say we don't need a man and we can artificially impregnate our, ourselves like i mean it's just it's actually it's deplorable and it's sad it's just it's, yeah. it's not where i want to see you know, my two sons grow up in a world where they're told they're not good because they are. And, and there are a lot of men out there, like I said, suffering because of this. And uh, the natural order, and I say that very firmly, has been disrupted. It's been inverted. It's been, it's, it's, it's not the way it's supposed to be. And this is why we're in the situation we're in. Right. And the forces that be, uh, the, the powers that be just keep pushing this narrative, this, this anti-man narrative. And like I said, this is the reason why we're here is a lot of men have just kind of taken this back seat. They don't want to ruffle feathers. I see it in marriages a lot too, where um, not only will the, 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 the female lead, but the, that female inherently resents that man for right. leading. Right. So, I mean, I, I've seen this over and over and over, and, and to kind of segue into, you know, personal relationships, uh, heterosexual relations between a man and a woman. If the man isn't the dominant uh, assertive force, uh, it ensures that the boundaries are, are maintained within the family, it leads the family properly. I mean, and this isn't a bad thing. I mean, I'm talking like a, a, a fun, outgoing, loving husband to both his wife and his kids, but he knows who he is. He knows what his value is. He's assertive. He's dominant. He's strong. He's courageous and all these, these great things. A woman will naturally fall into her feminine side and they will um, allow that man to lead. They will act as a, um, someone who's very loyal, kind, loving, submissive. And I don't mean submissive in the sexual, I mean submissive in the non, non argumentative way. They trust their husband to make the right decisions. When that gets inverted and that polarity gets inverted, you start to see the, the boundaries be tested. Then once the boundaries are tested, the resentment and the re disrespect starts. You'll see, you know, uh, the wife may be calling them names or, or, you know, giving them a silent treatment or withholding intimacy and sex because she doesn't find the way he is attractive. Right. And eventually the resentment builds, the contempt builds, and then, He's now just trying to keep the peace. He's doing everything he was told. Be a good husband. Look after her. Say sorry. Uh, you know, and then she just finds these types of um, behaviors unattractive. And uh, you're, in a, you're in a slippery slope at that point, whether you get divorced or not. But I can tell you that's, that's usually how sexist marriages end up. That's where it starts. Well, I've, I've worked out since I was in high school. And uh, when I was in grade, I don't know, grade 10, 
so the tenth grade, I was uh, I was a smaller frame kid. I didn't lift weights and stuff. So I spent the whole summer lifting weights. When I came back to school that year, uh, the the attention I got from from the girls were was unbelievable. Um, fast forward another couple of years, I was in the showers during gym class. Uh, like I was working out all the time, so my my arms were big. And so one of the guys complimented me. Well, he went and told all the people, all like all our schoolmates and stuff. And it was unbelievable. I, I got my first dose of reality. How many, this, so this was probably about, uh, I don't know, 12th grade. How many girls would call me and how many of them were involved and they were secretly trying to, you know, uh, get me, I guess, or right. to sleep with me. Um, because my physique was, I mean, I was I almost a six-pack. I had a great physique. I looked good. I was a nice jawline. You know, the whole nine yards, all those breathing cues that, that women and men have. Well, I was triggering these, these breathing cues for these women, and it was insane. It was like handed to me on a silver platter. And the things that they would say and try to hide and the sneakiness was unbelievable. I was never exposed to it my whole life because I was always under the impression that girls were good girls. They were innocent. I mean, right. you know, that, that, that thing. So fast forward again, um, till I was 22, I was at a bar one day and I'd come back from, um, uh, I one of my university programs and I was in great shape again. And I had about three weeks and it was again, just handed to me. And, um, unless you experience that, uh, you never really knew the, you know the true nature of of of, a, of a attraction with females. You, I, I I can tell you something. If if I never experienced that and you were telling me this, I would just dismiss it as you know luck or something like that. Uh, a good physique, you know, body fat below fifteen percent, um, a, a, you know, a, a non round face, and I mean like physical features popping with your jawline and stuff like that. It is an absolute life hack with women. You will get so right. much attention. And if you have any type of personality, you know, it's over. It's absolutely over. And unfortunately, it's, I mean, you can't knock women for it. Their nature is to find the, the most uh, a secure guy with the, the best genes. That's just their, their nature. So until you, I mean, there is a bit of an anger phase with a lot of men that I talk to about this. When they see it, or, or they, maybe they have a, a wife or a girlfriend that they've witnessed that behavior um, on another man, and they were able to see it or witness it or come across text messages, it is, it's heartbreaking because, yeah. you know, your, your girl, the one that says that she loves you and all these things, it, you know, it goes out the window when, when that natural, raw, primal attraction takes over. It's, it's that genuine desire is unbelievable. So... One of the first things I tell men, I say, like they talk about, I, I want to be more confident. I want to be, how do I get my wife to, or my girlfriend to, you know, or how do I attract women? I tell them, first thing I say, do you lift weights? Are you in the gym five, six times a week? And it doesn't have to be for two, three hours. I mean, 40 minutes, 40 minutes, five times a week, we get you a great looking body. And, and then you, you look after yourself outside the gym. Well, trust me. A lot of your issues with confidence and stuff like that are just going to go by the wayside. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, look, every every man who has lost his his uh, his home, his foothold with with his wife, and 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 uh, his, uh, lost her attraction, all he has to do is start working out. And I would say that forty minutes isn't needed. I haven't worked out for 40 minutes in years. And I'll tell you what, I'll kick the crap out of almost anybody that's half my age. You know, I can do a thousand pushups in an hour and 52 minutes or something like that. A thousand no lock, uh, perfect pushups. And I know most men can't do that in their twenties. I know that. Yeah, that's an achievement. That's, that's good. I, I, I've always said this physical fitness is a lifestyle. It's not, it's not a hobby. Um, I'm not talking, you know, you know, every day you're watching your, your intake or your, your I mean, you got to live your life too, but you should have an urge every day to do something. 
Be physically fit. Be active. Be strong. Be confident in your abilities. And yes, a, a good, solid, manly built frame is is attractive to women, and it's it's attractive to men in a different sense. They respect you. It's you have instant respect when you are you have a large frame or a well developed physique. You're absolutely so, right. So yeah, um, some people work out for aesthetics. Um, I mean, I think there should be a combination. I think you know you sh- you should look out to be, uh, work out to be strong. And you should work out to, to, you know, be proud of what you've built, your body. So um, a lot of times guys aren't even lifting weights. They, they're they not lifting weights and they don't understand why their sex is dropped off. And, 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 you know, maybe they got a bit of a belly and they got a puffy face and they're just kind of lazy and they're playing video games or they're, you know, they, they, they resort to, you know, porn and, and stuff like this, and they, they're not fixing the problem. Well, guess what? It's hard work to maintain a nice body, but it doesn't have to be. Right. You can enjoy it. I, I have a workout coming in after this interview here. I'm, I can't wait. I look forward to it, and I'm just debating what some of the exercises I'm going to do. So it's just important that, that you maintain that physical fitness. And I think as a father, um, my job, and my, you know, as a, as a father and to lead my children, um, and as a role model, I want to ensure that physical fitness and strength and, and stuff like that, that plays a role in, in, in their development as well. And they take a, a liking to it because, like I said, uh, men respect you. Women want you. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. I almost said that there's there should be no excuse for, for men, which technically there shouldn't be. But men should know – they should know the, the – uh, the war field that they're playing in. If you know most food is is uh, packed with soy, then you need to navigate around that. That if you know your testosterone is low, and and every man should know his testosterone, whether his testosterone is low, just by his own actions. <laughs> he doesn't have uh, to get so, Yeah, there are there are. Um noticeable differences in the way a man carries himself that you, you should be able to tell whether you have um, a, a decent testosterone level or not. I mean, one of the big things I was saying um, to another individual this week was morning wood. If you're not waking up with, you know, after a six and a half, seven hour sleep minimum with a heart on, um, that's one of the telltale signs. Um, so yeah, testosterone levels, get them checked get them checked at least once a year. And like you said, there are things you can do to avoid and you have to consciously do them. They're tough. I mean, everyone wants to just go out and eat fun food and good food all the time and, and all the crappy seed oils and stuff that we're consuming. But um, there are things you can do to, and the thing is, is testosterone had such a bad uh, rap over the, rap over the last few years. I mean, I, I tell people you're going to have healthier looking skin. You're going to look better. You're going to have more of a dominant hunter eyes. The, the, uh, limbal rings that, that surround your eyes thicken actually when you, when you have high testosterone. So that's a natural mating, uh, female, uh, sexual rating cue. When women see that, they, they look at that and they, they love it. And it's not just for women. It's for your own, you know, mental clarity. Depression drops when you have high testosterone. Inflammation drops. Your energy levels go through the roof. Your muscle growth and and that confidence level, you know, and just overall risks of heart attacks and strokes and everything else drop. Right, right. And it's very simple. I mean, yes, there are factors at play. There's hormones in our water. We're drinking microplastics. We're eating soy. Um, we're wearing polyester, which kind of is new to me. I just found out that uh, polyester around your scrotum over the course of a year will basically uh, make your uh, sperm count zero. So you become infertile with just polyester underwear. And no one talks about this. So skinny jeans. Yeah. I tell people, it's very simple. You just got to make the conscious effort. Get some sun, vitamin D, zinc. Eat some good, like I said, you don't have to be... Uh, agree with me on the diets, but if you look at the uh, the nutritional content and makeup of red meat, especially liver, I mean, they're, it's an absolute superfood, especially if you can get a, a pasture-fed, organic, you know, non-jabbed uh, with antibiotics and all that stuff, cow, um, no porn. Like I said, the studies show you, you your increase in testosterone from not jerking off. 
You know, lifting weights, competing in sports, sleeping six or seven to ten hours. At, well, not ten hours. I mean, but seven hours a night. Right. You mean eating? You know, uh, what is it? Fruity Pebbles isn't uh, isn't good for you every morning. Oh, Fruity Pebbles. Yeah, that's one of the testosterone hacks. You eat that every day. Through the roof. Through the roof. Did you see that study? I did see. Uh, it was um, it was just released this week. It said it was. Lucky Charms were healthier than cheese, butter, and red meat. Yes. Or ground beef or something. I was like, if people can, if people believe this, they're doomed. I mean, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Look, black people have been brainwashed and trained to not want to read anything. If you think about that, if you're brainwashed not to read, which is happening to everybody now, but it, it, it started in, in, in the black community, in the, in the black schools, reading was actually painful for black people. And if you think about it from a, from a, a societal hierarchy, when you're brainwashing people and through, through uh, visual stimulation, television, et cetera, internet, their only knowledge comes from that system of brainwashing. Nothing else. They have nothing to compare it to. Yeah, so, you're a product of your environment. Absolutely. You so if, if you tell someone that Fruity Pebbles or whatever it was, I can't even remember what it was, but um, Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. If you tell someone who doesn't read that Lucky Charms is good for them and better than meat, what do you think they're going to do? You know, it, this is just all part of that bigger plan. Just keep people in the dark, feed them crap, let them know, let, you know, don't really tell them the truth. Maybe hint, you know, through that predictive programming kind of thing and, and keep, keep, keep people weak and docile. I mean, and like we were talking earlier, um, that entire, well, we didn't say it, but divide and conquer. Yeah. Divide and conquer. Unity is what everybody needs, and that's what they don't want. So how do you do this? You divide and conquer. You, it's, uh, it's a wild world we live in. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy right now. It is. It is. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, uh, to, to shift gears. I know you're probably not into this, but I love to ask guys um, what's your favorite sports car. And that's a big, fast switch of gears, but uh, what's your favorite you know what? sports car? Um, I'm going to have to just say, I'm not a, I'm not a car guy. I enjoy, um, I enjoy the, the Hellcats. I like them. Um, the, some of the Corvettes look good. I, I like some of the, I, here's the thing. If I had endless money, I'd probably, I'd probably get a Lamborghini or two. Um, I, I enjoy them, especially the older ones, the old 19, late eighties, early nineties, Countach's. I like them. Yeah. But I would say I'm a truck guy. I like trucks. So, okay. Yeah, I would say, I don't know, maybe an F-250 or something that loaded the leather. Okay, okay. I Look, uh, RT, I don't know how people are going to take this uh, th this podcast. Uh, maybe they'll just uh, tune out when they get to this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because uh, uh, we, we, we've talked about... Uh, things that I that I know people will just completely lose their mind over um, it's what they can and I'm at a point where I know I don't care if I'm upsetting people it's not my duty to ensure your emotional state people say things that upset me all the time I don't go on rants I don't go crazy I don't attack them or dox them I just disagree with them and I move on and then I simply say to people that are looking for my advice i tell them what i think it's funny because um i mean twitter is a twitter is a uh, a community where you can basically you know you can get away with a lot of stuff that you couldn't say in the real world um you know so and you can do it uh, anonymously so the problem is um i, I will correct um lies that I feel that 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 need to be corrected, yeah. but I don't go crazy. I just voice my opinion. I don't get into things. I don't. I don't. 
you know, usually say disrespectful things. I don't attack them personally. I don't attack their family. That's the thing. We we've, we've lost that. You you can disagree respectfully, and we used to do this back in the day. We used to disagree respectfully, and used to used to honor other people's opinions. Nowadays, you cannot have a, a differing opinion. And then if you do, you're you're an idiot. You're a fool. You're a misogynist. They often say words or, or call you names and put titles on you that will discredit you. Like you're a misogynist, or you're probably a racist, or you're probably a conspiracy theorist. It's right, like, right. That's where we are now. And, and and most people, if if you ask them, well, what does that mean? They again, they haven't read enough to to even know like a, a definition. You know, um, here's the thing about definitions. So I I, I did some research uh, a, a while back for uh, some articles that I wrote, and um, I'm sure you know this already. Uh, Google's rewriting definitions. Oh, for sure, absolutely. It's George Orwell in 1984. Holy it, mackerel! Yeah, we're it's it's happening. I mean, I'm aware of it. It's happening. It, it's it's just it's the it's the current life we're living right now. Yeah, if they don't like uh, what you have to say. Well, they'll rewrite the definition so it supports what. Uh, their agenda is their their narrative. So absolutely, and it gets worse. So uh, I am an absolute research junkie. I mean, I I I research things and then I pull them off of the internet. Um, for the past maybe twenty five years, I have uh I, I have information which I probably shouldn't even be saying, but um, I've archived a numerous amount, so terabytes of information. And uh, what I found um, early on, and uh, not early on, but um, lately, is that there are, um, there are websites dedicated, dedicated to writing multiple articles, and I mean multiple to uh, hundreds of articles, that will then be uh, pushed by the algorithm that are absolutely false. Yeah. Like toxic positivity. Have you ever heard of that? I have not, no. Yeah, I mean, look it up. You'll find you'll find two pages of articles that are focused on toxic pos- positivity. And if you and and uh, if you if you do take the time to look it up, look at who the authors are. All of the authors, almost 100% is what I found. I think I found two men, but all of the authors are women. You know, it's um, it's interesting that you bring that article up because I believe I just, I'm trying to recall, was was uh, one of the uh, publishers of the New York Times just so, recently in the last, say, three weeks? Yeah, and earlier. So, like for the past, um, I, I think I discovered it maybe as 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 far back as six months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but article after article after article were basically they were clone articles. All the articles basically say the exact same thing. Now these aren't AI written. You can still tell, but from from human and AI, they may be partial partial AI written and, and partial human. But these are human written. And they're placed on multiple different websites, so different uh, media avenues, so that when people stumble across them, basically through the algorithm, if they do research and say, well, who else is saying this? It'll take them to another article about toxic positivity that basically says the same thing, which clarifies the, the, you know, it it gives substance to the information. it, It gives it strength. Yeah, social proof. It, social proof, right. It, I'm, I'm aware that the, these practices occur. I mean, the algorithms, even when uh, Zuckerberg with Facebook was under that congressional committee, he basically said, I think it was about vaccines, but he basically said, yeah, we, 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 we make sure the information that people see, we, we want them to see. So, right. um, yeah, so it's a sign of the times. It's the sign of the times. I, 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 the, the amount of information out there 
Uh, and when I say information, I'm, including, I'm saying true information, disinformation, and misinformation that's done purposefully. Um, it's it's hard for someone starting out to navigate what's real, what's not. A lot of times they just say, ah, I don't know, like you said, ah, what can you do about it? I'm just going to live my life and just right. hope for the best. So I think it's actually a tactic, right, to just kind of just discourage people. Right, right, right. Um, what is the best advice you've ever gotten in your life? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. Um, the best advice, I guess you could say, is it's never as bad as it seems. Um, a lot of times uh, I've been in some hairy situations, and uh, it's always worked out. Now, is that for everybody? No. But my the best advice I have always kind of clung to was it's never as bad as it seems. Time will, time will pass, and, and these things will heal. So um, it's just a glimmer of hope, you know, Sometimes people are going through some stuff, tough stuff. Um, just to give an example, yeah. So an individual contacted me uh, about a year ago and just expressed concern that he was going to be kind of taken over the coals uh, by his wife and there were false allegations and, and stuff like that. Um, I, I gave him the best advice I could. I'm not a lawyer, but I gave him personal advice on how to protect himself and that things won't be as bad as they seem that his little girls need him. He had three of them, three little girls. And um, obviously, again, telling them not to do anything stupid because a lot of times guys will get into a deep, dark space where they're not fulfilling their role as a, as a, as a man, you know, the, the visionary and the provider, and they, they feel a sense of void. And I explained to him that uh, these, these are the toughest times and they will, he will get over them. And that it won't be as bad as it seems. Um, I know that it did work out for him, and I spoke with him, um, and he's doing much better. He says he's a lot happier, and it's it's just one of those pieces pieces of advice that I mean, I, I could, if you told me to name, if I had a, a day or two to think of everything I've been told, I could probably come up with something better. But you know, it's not it's never as bad as it seems, and that's the that's the best piece of advice I can give right now. Okay. I mean, th that was the best piece of advice that someone gave you, right? Yes, and, and it stuck with me through my teenage years, and um, yeah. And, and, and so you passed that on to uh, to, to that guy? Yeah, okay. I would say that uh, that holds on, it, it holds pretty true for the most part, so. Okay, okay. Um, do you Do you believe in the law of attraction? Um, are you talking? Uh, you you basically um, attract what you you believe you should attract. Yes. Yeah, I do. I think um, you kind of whatever you put in, you, you get back. Um, it's funny you say that because positive affirmations are kind of new to me in the last year or two, okay. and uh, I I believe that positive affirmations work. So if you if you constantly are in a negative kind of mindset it's hard to kind of progress out of there. Um, I know it's all over the media, all over, I should say, social media right now, like self-care and positivity and all this other stuff. I truly believe that if you internalize a positive mindset, that you are good, that you are inherently good, that you are an attractive, strong pe person, that people do enjoy your company and they do love you, and that you are, you can be successful if you want to be successful. If you want to start a business, you know, I can do this. And, and you know, you have that positive uh, uh, mindset. Yes, you will achieve good things. Th good things will come your way. And this isn't just like a, uh, a silly uh, um, way of thinking. This is, th there's, there's a lot of science that backs this up. There's a lot of science that, you know, in fact, uh, a while back I heard a documentary or I watched a documentary on YouTube about uh, one of the, uh, the, some of the characteristics that billionaires share. And the, the one that they all had in common was they all knew they were going to be successful. So they believed in themselves enough that, and these weren't like, I guess you could say, uh, popular billionaires. They were billionaires. They had multiple houses around the world. Um, but they were, you know, 
living their, their best life now, and they, they were very positive. And a lot of them were, were simply saying that I, I knew that I could do this. I used to say in the mirror, you know, I'm a good person. I'm going to be able to do this today, and and it works. Um, I think Conor McGregor, the UFC fighter, uh, back when he was a carpenter, he uh, he used to look in the mirror every day and say, you're the strongest. Nobody can touch me, uh, you know, talking to himself. And, I mean, he achieved greatness. He believed in himself. And I think if you get it, you get that mindset right, you can you can do anything. So, yeah, the law of attraction, if that's the formal word, then, yes, I do believe in a form of that. Okay, okay. Um, I always I always ask that question because, um, for obvious reasons, uh, to, to see uh, where people's minds are and if they believe that they have the ability to uh, create success in the manner uh, that they see it for themselves, because everybody sees success differently. Um, we're, we're more programmed to think about it from a financial standpoint and from a have uh, or, or a... Uh, kind of a greed standpoint. Well, it's like interesting to, you, say that again. Sorry, but yeah, I don't mean to interrupt, but yes, I did bring up things such as uh, money, as money being the ultimate uh, goal. No, um, in, in terms of the billionaires, yes, they absolutely achieved financial su- success. And in turn, I would say the financial success allows them to have almost an infinite amount of time freedom to right. spend what they want to do on, on, in their life in terms of Conor McGregor. Um, yeah, he achieves greatness. He achieved fame, success, and, um, he's, he's, he's got money, but I mean, he's, he's the type of guy that, I mean, he's had the same woman since, and she stuck with him and he stuck with her through, throughout the, uh, the, the ladder that they climbed. Um, so that's fantastic as well. I think, and you hit, you hit the point there. Um, it's not just financial. Like, uh, if you're content and you are happy, truly happy inside, and you can lay your head on a pillow and, and say you've done your best and you're raising good children and your children are happy, well, what else is there, right? So that's the best thing you can do. Money obviously opens up doors. Money opens up that, that freedom to, to take your family on trips, vacations, and give them a life that, that uh, you think they, they should experience. But uh, mindset – you know, to cap it off, definitely plays a role. Right, right. What um, w- what are your plans for the next uh, uh, six months to 15 months as far as your business? And then I want you to, um, if you will, talk about your um, your ebook. And then this is probably all, all falls under the same uh, um, question or, or response. Um, I purchased your your ebook. I don't do that often uh, from people that I I, I just meet because I like to know people for a while before I interact with them uh, by purchasing something because there's a lot of bull crap information out there. But um, Kind of wrap all of that up and 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 uh, and and tell me what uh, six months to fifteen months looks like for you, RT. Uh, so this is a side kind of hustle, side gig. Um, I I look to expand um, my, I guess, digital real estate, if you could say, and um, possibly offer because I used to do you know personal training and men's mentoring and stuff, maybe. Uh, dive into that a little bit more, but in the short term, um, just looking to grow my account, I've got um, another ebook coming out. So I never, this isn't my niche, but I, I definitely kind of uh, hack the algorithm in terms of what works and what doesn't. And I've been doing a lot of research on how to grow your audience. And um, the the initial book that I put out, the uh, Maximize Your Twitter Growth, um, that's just an offset. What I what I plan on doing with that is affiliate marketing. I, I plan to um, expand that information so that was like a four four or five page book um i'm currently in uh in the process of developing into about a 15 page book with 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 more in-depth tactics on basically how the algorithm works and how to network how to how to uh share your message and and achieve you know multiple um um how to, how to grow your audience. And so remind me, I'm going to send that to you. I'll obviously pre-charge. I appreciate it. I just want to 
send that to you. And I know you're uh, you're you're looking to uh, grow, but it's it's a it's an algorithm that you have to understand how it kind of works. And they want people on that Twitter account. So if you interact and there's a lot of engagement with your account through likes, retweets, and and stuff like that, um, you'll get preference and priority over other tweets. So some of the things I speak about there. But on a on a side note, um, where I'm going to head to uh, eventually is testosterone optimization. So I know there's a lot of gurus and stuff out there, but this has been kind of a side hobby of mine for for many years. Um, some of the things that I've done personally that work uh, through blood labs and stuff like that, I want to share. Um, one of the things I, I, I speak to a lot is polyester clothing um, and uh, avoid as much as you can uh, polyester on your body. You want denim, you want cotton, these types of things. Um, can you do it all the time? No. Um, sometimes if you want to work out, whatever. I'm just saying... Uh, there is a, a consequence of wearing polyester on your on your body, and uh, the estrogen type um, um, uh, things that it mimics in your body, and it's not good for for a man. It's not good for a woman either. Um, so I'm going to be heading into the uh, that realm, and um, that I hope to have that book ebook done in the next uh, month or two. Okay. And then again, just cross flat, uh, platform uh, growing sharing my insights and videos and stuff on uh, Instagram, starting a chat group um, where I can interact with uh, individuals instead of just everyone direct messaging me. And maybe even a... Uh, Is that through Telegram? Yeah, it will be through Telegram. It will be on a link. I'll have it on my profile. But I, I want to get into... I won't get into TikTok, I don't think. I mean, I think that's a young man's game. Uh, in terms of you know, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen-year-old type thing, I I don't even like the uh, the fact that it's every every piece of information is data mined from that as well. So, um, but I will get into uh, other cro- platforms, starting a newsletter, and in the newsletter, I'll be discussing topics that relate to men, and it could be anything from you know, testosterone to how do I work out and get better or mindset or how to deal with women? There's, there's a lot of issues that I feel that I've been able to conquer through experience with women that I can share. A lot of it's online and, and, and some of it's more of a pickup artistry type stuff. Other stuff is, you know, buy your wife roses and tell her you love her every day and everything will be fine. Well, that's, that's not, that's not reality. So um, give some guidance on, to men with, with this information as well. So we'll see. Hopefully I can monetize it enough and grow my audience and connect with my audience enough that I can do this full time so I can really create a uh, uh, strong community of men to to hopefully, you know, better their lives. And, and we all win, myself included. Right, right, right. All right. Great stuff. Great stuff. So let me ask you this. The the advice that you that you got um, and, and the advice advice that you. Uh, gave the guy would you give that the the the, uh, the guy who was uh, divorcing w- would that be the ultimate advice let me let me do it this way give the audience three key points that you believe would w- would help them to better their life in the next 90 days we'll be right back Thank you for listening to the Michelson Williams TSX podcast, where Michelson talks about everything true success. I hope you're enjoying the show. Host Michelson Williams looks forward to bringing you more fantastic interviews with people who are shaping the future. This episode is sponsored by ADM Fitness Effect, the app that allows users to monetize their increased fitness output and then pays them in ADM e-crypto tokens for completed tasks. Also by Flow State Design Clothing and Accessories for the Eruditely Man and Map Magazine, the magazine for the true success seeker like you. Be sure to follow Real Truths for Men on Twitter, where you will find his ebook Maximize Your Twitter Growth. RT unlocks the Twitter algorithm and gives you practical tasks that will assure that you will grow a real following on Twitter. Don't forget to support the podcast if you like the content and link up with Michelson on all social media. Thanks for joining us on the Michelson Williams True Success Expert Podcast. Let's continue. Three key points that you believe would 
w- would help them to better their life in the next 90 days? Uh, speaking directly to men, I would say get off porn right now. Um, you're going to notice a difference within three days. The cravings are going to kind of drop off. You have to recognize you have a por- porn issue, a problem, and you got to get away from it. There are so many problems with it. I mean, hair loss, uh, social anxiety, uh, decreased testosterone, so the, uh, anxiety, depression, um, uh, nervous system disorders, ha- uh, health problems. It, it, it's endless. It's endless. So stay off porn. One of the hardest things you can do is quit pornography. If you can get fast the first three days, you can quit. Um, and I would say to these individuals, you cannot allow yourselves to take a peek. Do not look at porn. It is destroying you. Um, recognizing the problem is the first step. Stopping it is very difficult. And um, I, I think there's a will. Um, there's a lot of books out there, a lot of self-help books saying, you know, these are the steps you got to take. Um, one of the best pieces of advice that I was ever given was next time you're about to masturbate to porn, you take a camera, a separate camera, and you put it on you. You record yourself. Pretend, pretend it's not even there. Look at the porn and watch how sad and a, a pathetic individual you are when you, when you finish. Uh, watch that video, and I guarantee you that you're going to have a, a bit of a change of heart. It's funny because when someone told me that, I laughed, and I said, you know what, man, that's that's probably great advice. And they said, it is. Look, Think about how pathetic and sad you would look, you know, looking at, looking at digital pornography. Like, these girls aren't even real, so it doesn't mean anything. So that's number one. Um, number two, I would say you got to hit the gym, you got to lift weights. Not only are you going to benefit from the health aspect, but your your confidence levels are going to improve. You need confidence as a man. You need confidence to be able to navigate yourself through this world, and this world's only getting tougher. You're going to feel better. You're going to look better. When you, when you look better, you feel better. And you're going to be stronger. You're going to have more respect from men and more attraction from women, that type of thing. It's fantastic. And the third thing is, I would say educate yourself with real nutrition um, a lot of the food we consume over the, you know, over our lifetime, it's just junk. It's just absolute junk. So understand real nutrition. We don't, you shouldn't be buying the cheap, you know, pizza pockets and all this nonsense, uh, convenience and uh, convenience food. We don't need it. You want to eat real food. You want to eat good nutritional food. You know, back in the day, I would say this, people say, Oh, potatoes are to- so bad for you. I say, well, the Irish lived off potatoes, and so can you. They are they are packed with nutrients. So is red meat. So are avocados. So are so are uh, uh, bananas. I mean, there's all these and eggs. That is another one. Like, I consume three raw eggs every morning if I don't cook them. If I if I'm in a rush, three raw eggs. Boom. I met a lady in her in her late 80s, and I asked her. She was very witty, very smart, very friendly, outgoing, and I believe she was actually 89. And she said to me, I asked her, I said, what's the, what's the secret? She said, the secret of what? I said, I said, you're the longevity. Like, how did you manage to be, you know, still mobile, still independent? And she said, I eat a ride every single morning. And I laughed. I said, are you serious? She goes, I do. And I said, do you truly believe that is the reason? She goes, eggs are a superfood. I said, oh. I, I wanted to ask you, um, so we do a lot of research, okay? We do a lot of research to try to hone our skills and everything. So I wanted to ask you if if your research has given you your own voice yet. Do you feel like you have your own voice or are you waiting for your own voice to, to hit? Or do you feel like you're kind of uh, regurgitating just the information that's been pushed in your head? Well, I mean... Prior to a decade ago, um, I always had a, an instinctual sense of feeling that, you know, the world was a little different than I suspected, that women respond to, and you know, things that aren't basically taught in the mainstream. Um, so I read a lot of books. Um, I did a lot of research. So is, is some of the stuff regurgitated? Absolutely. Um Ro Tomasi, who who writes the book The Rational Male, right. he speaks to genuine desire quite often, and I use that term quite frequently. Um, 
Yeah, so you know you can't negotiate genuine desire. It's either there or it's not. You can you can facilitate it, uh, but you can't negotiate it. You can't say to a woman, I don't like especially your wife. Like you can't have, be vulnerable and say like you don't have sex with me. Uh, you know, it's uh, my feelings are getting hurt. That doesn't resonate with her. She's looking for those those primal mating cues. So you can't negotiate genuine desire. Yes, I use that term. Is it is it plagiarized? Well, no, I I give credit um, often. I mean, I didn't today, but it's it's that's where it's regurgitated. But in terms of my own voice, yes, I know what needs to be said. I know how to respond in certain situations. I can give examples and stuff. But do I have a solid foundation from other individuals that kind of led the led the way? Hundred percent. I, I wouldn't even put myself even in the same category of expertise. But I'm definitely very aware of how uh, things operate, um, not just on a um, you know intersexual dynamic base and and relationship base, but understanding you know like I said uh, confidence. I mean I've I've been to therapists for various reasons, um, not not anything to do with me, but um, counseling and stuff for relationships. And some of the the information they were giving me was so contradictory to what I've learned. And and when I would call them on it, I would actually surprise them. And when they tried, when we when we would debate our our points, um, a lot of times they would concede and say, "Yeah, I never really thought of it like that." Um, other times they wouldn't, and I can understand that. But um, I can definitely hold my own, and I um, I, I definitely try to be my own person when it comes to a lot of this stuff. Yeah. But uh, w- w- one thing that that uh, that, that uh, I'm going to mention, and, and I'm going to mention it to uh, um, you and the audience, is um, I've had clients that were counselors, counselors and psychologists, and um, I advise people to think very, very deeply if they can before they go see one of them, because counselors are broken people trying to advise broken people and that system goes all the way back to freud and i won't get into that too far but that the the counseling system especially in 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 the west um starts from a place where you are broken and and then they, they say that you know it's okay to be broken and it's okay to do what you're doing um and and, and in my experience of having clients and, and even uh, dating a counselor at, at one time, broken people trying to teach other broken people. Most people get into psychology, including myself, because they're trying to find out something about themselves. But here's the problem. When you're studying psychology, you're not working on yourself. You're trying to find out what's wrong with everyone else. You start off trying to find out what's wrong with yourself. It's a good idea, a good start. And then as as the process goes, you end up not finding out about yourself and then trying to tell everyone else um, uh, what they are doing wrong in their life. And I've seen this over and over and over and over again. If you want to fix your mind, a good route to go is hypnosis. So, um, and then on that note, um, I have another question for you. This one's a little bit personal. Uh, Mm -hmm. You are are married, correct? I am. Do you, and this is for the men, do you roughhouse with your wife? Uh, Like, yeah, roughhouse, peas, play, absolutely. Okay, that is extremely healthy, don't you think? Uh, yes. Um, it shows playful dominance. Um, I think it's required. I think a lot of times, um, when you know, when I play with my wife and rough house and joke around with her, it could be slapping her butt, it could be anything. Um, it's one of those things that uh, that uh, is required in a relationship. Couples that play together stay together. Awesome. Awesome. Like that, that is probably, that's going to be the cherry on the cake uh, for this, for this interview. 
you said all the right things there. I, I agree with you 100%. So on that note, I'm going to give you the floor for your closing argument and not arguments, but <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I don't really have much more to say. I think I've said everything. If they want, if, if your audience wants to come check me out, I'm at Real Truth for Men. That's a four, the number four on Twitter. Um, I share stuff every single day. And um, I, I really appreciate you having me on your podcast. Will do. Thank you very much, sir. All right. We'll, we'll, I'll stay in touch with you on social media. Thanks again. Yes, sir. H have a good one. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Michelson Williams TSX podcast, where Michelson talks about everything true success. I hope you enjoyed the show. Host Michelson Williams looks forward to bringing you more fantastic interviews with people who are shaping the future. This episode is sponsored by ADM Fitness Effect, the app that allows users to monetize their increased fitness output and then pays them in ADM e crypto tokens for completed tasks. Also by Flow State Design Clothing and Accessories for the Eruditely Man and Map Magazine, the magazine for the true success seeker like you. Be sure to follow Real Truths for Men on Twitter, where you will find his ebook Maximize Your Twitter Growth. RT unlocks the Twitter algorithm and gives you practical tasks that will assure that you will grow a real following on Twitter. Don't forget to support the podcast if you like the content and link up with Michelson on all social media. Thanks for joining us on the Michelson Williams True Success Expert Podcast.